members that'll make sure that you are you get one of these worship aids. The procession is going to be on closed streets through Oakland. It's about a mile long and the police will be doing a rolling closure, so we'll be able to be out in the street safely. Um, the the per participation in the, in the procession is, is optional, but if you are going to join us, we'll be stopping at three altars for prayer, uh, singing, and a simple benediction. And then when the, when the procession is, uh, returns back to the cathedral, we'll be um, concluding with a solemn benediction. Welcome to St. Paul Cathedral. A special welcome to all those who are visiting us today. Please silence all cell phones and electronic devices as we prepare to celebrate Mass for the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. We encourage you to use the participation aid which has been placed in the pews. The scripture readings for this liturgy may be found in the hymnal at number 1108. Our celebrant is Bishop David Zubik, with concelebrants Bishop Walter Scheid, Father Chris Stubna, and Father Tom Sparacino. Please join in singing, Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, printed on page one of the participation aid.
my sisters and brothers, good afternoon. Together with Bishop Walterscheid, Father Stubna, Father Sparacino, all of our ministers here in the sanctuary and in my own name, not only do I welcome all of you, those who are here with us in the cathedral, but those who join us by way of live streaming, I also want to wish all of you a happy feast day. You know, we talk about the fact that the, the perfect definition of the church is that it is the body of Christ. And what makes us the body of Christ is the most precious gift that we have of receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in Holy Communion in the Eucharist. And so today we join with all of our sisters and brothers throughout the world as we mark this great feast, this great solemnity of the body and blood of the Lord of Corpus Christi. For that, we must be eternally grateful to God. And please join with me now as we thank God the best way that we can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Let us first call to mind our sins so that we may truly celebrate these sacred mysteries. Together we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram, my God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him in a tenth of everything, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can, they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord.
Once again, it, it's so good to see so many of you here in the cathedral today, and I hope that most of you will be able to join us through the beautiful procession immediately following our Mass through the streets of Oakland. I think many of you know that the Feast of Corpus Christi is one of the special moments in the church where we are able to use the beautiful and traditional practice of, of processions, but this one especially with carrying our dear blessed Lord uh, through the streets of our city. And I know that uh, like you, I feel the presence of so many people who are joining us by way of live streaming. So it really is so good to be together on this very beautiful day, not simply because of what's happening by way of weather, but because of the great gift that God the Father has given us in his Son. So I got to share with you a, a beautiful experience that I had this, this past week. On one of the evenings I was walking from my apartment on our diocesan campus over to our seminary chapel, the, the chapel of the Holy Family of Nazareth. And I ran into uh, one of our seminarians who had uh, a guest visitor with him. And the visitor introduced himself and he shared with me the, the great joy of accomplishment that he just finished his law degree, passed his boards. But more importantly, he shared with me that he was a recent convert to Catholicism. And I couldn't help myself but ask him, what was it that drew him to become a member of our church? And he didn't have to hesitate for a moment. He said that what drew him to become a member of our church was the Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, the presence of Jesus' body and blood, soul, and divinity. And following his answer, he and I got into a conversation that would have presumed that we had known each other for many years, but actually only met each other a minute before. And what drew us into that instant bond was our sheer reverence for the foundation of our faith, namely the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Well, today, we as a universal church celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, the solemnity of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. And as you are well aware, this is a feast that we celebrate every year, two weeks after we mark the great feast of Pentecost. But this year, this feast takes on a greater significance Together with the other 195 dioceses in our country, we begin today a national Eucharistic revival. A time over the course of these next three years so that all of us can rediscover what my friend, the young lawyer, discovered. How much Jesus and his presence in the Blessed Sacrament must be the foundation of our lives and who we are as a church. This Eucharistic revival could not come at a more needed moment. If we're going to be really honest, you and I uh, can admit the fact that probably for most of us, there are people in our families or our co-workers, or neighbors, or friends, who for one reason over another, uh, over the course of the last number of years, have stopped coming to Mass. And many explanations are used for that exodus. Job responsibilities, busy lives, the secularization of Sunday, where Sunday as a, a day of rest and worship no longer has any significance. But of all those reasons, the one that causes me most concern, and maybe you too, is how many people who claim to be Catholic do not know what the Eucharist is. And that, that reason alone 
demands that we begin a Eucharistic revival. You know, it's interesting that as you and I take a look at the readings that our Holy Church chooses for us, the reading from the Gospel today speaks about the miracle of Jesus using several loaves and, and a couple of fish to feed the hungry who were on their journey, people who were with the Lord Jesus for an entire day. But you know, we've got to remember that the reason why Jesus performed that miracle is the reason why he stayed with them that entire day. He wanted them to come to know the Father, and he wanted them to come to know who he was. And if they hadn't got the message in the course of his teaching, they certainly did by way of multiplying the loaves and fish for 5,000 or more. He got their attention. And he wanted to get their attention because he wanted them to come to know him and especially to come to love him. And you know, as powerful as that miracle was, and as we remember it today through the sacred scriptures and the Gospel of Luke, let's not kid ourselves. The same miracle that happened that day is the same miracle that will happen today on this altar. And every time that we come to celebrate the Holy Mass, like Jesus did for that large crowd, Jesus is not only providing us with food for our journey through life and hopefully to his kingdom in heaven, he's performing this miracle, the reason why he did it for the people in our gospel today. He desperately wants to become part of our lives. He desperately wants to be the foundation of what makes us tick. And the response to all of that is that we fall more deeply in love with him. You know, in my conversation with the young lawyer a couple of nights ago, we both appreciated our understanding of the Eucharist as being not a head trip, not something that requires from us an intellectual assent. But we came to know the Eucharist as it is. It has to be a matter of the heart to come to treasure and to always embrace the Eucharist for what it is. The body and blood of the Lord Jesus requires you and me of falling in love. Falling in love really with Jesus once again. And so think about that for a moment. Think about that time in our lives when we really fell in love with somebody else. Our greatest longing was to be with, to converse with, to laugh with, to cry with, to trust with another person. We wanted to live that connection heart to heart and nothing could stand in the way of being with the other person, of conversing with them, laughing with them, crying with them, connecting with them. When two people fall in love, they never want anything to stand in the way of that heart to heart connection. Following in love is a matter of connecting one's heart with that of another. And you know, my sisters and brothers in Christ, falling in love with Jesus can be no less. Jesus offers the gift of himself in the Eucharist, just as he did to the crowd who gathered together with him in our gospel today. And nothing Absolutely nothing should ever stand in the way of that beautiful connection. And so as you and I begin these next three years of the National Eucharistic Revival on this Corpus Christi Sunday, Jesus invites us to take the time, to take the time, to be able to see what the Eucharist means in our lives. That applies to those who come to Mass every Sunday, and maybe even those who come to daily Mass. That's an invitation from Jesus that's applied to people who 
come to Mass only by way of online visions of the Mass. That is an invitation that comes to people who have stopped coming to Mass days ago, weeks ago, months ago, or even years ago. It is absolutely essential that if we're serious about what it means to be a disciple of the Lord, that we take advantage of what these next three years will offer us. Beginning today and throughout until next June, we'll have lots of opportunities to do that in our diocese. Next June, the focus will happen on what occurs in our parishes. And, and two years from now, we'll focus attention as a country, all night, 196 dioceses, taking a look at what can it mean for us to understand who we are as the body of Christ. And it is absolutely essential that we take advantage of the invitation that Jesus affords us. Because talking Turkey, we all know what happens when a love relationship is not nurtured. We've seen the damage that happens when couples start to take each other for granted. When friends stop talking with each other. When families lose sight of their common roots. Relationships diminish and love grows stale. It cannot be that way in our relationship with Jesus. His love for us is so great, building on the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes and the miracle that we heard today, a little later in his life, Jesus addressed his apostles at one of the most tender moments of his life in that upper room of the Last Supper. And what Jesus had to say to them applies to you and me. I am the living bread who comes down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. My hope is that all of us, you and me, can embrace those words of invitation from Jesus to fall in love, really fall in love more with him. May that be for you and for me. Because think of this. Our future, our eternal future, rests on our response. It truly is a matter of his heart connecting with our hearts and of our hearts connecting with his heart. And so now, and together in response to the power of God's word, we proudly stand as we profess our creed. I believe in one God.
and we lift up to his Father and our Father in heaven all that is on our hearts, all of which needs his help. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy people, nourished by this Holy Eucharist, that we may be strengthened to share with all the people the good news of God's redemptive love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For true and lasting peace among all nations in the world, for peace in our communities, in our families, and for peace to reign in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer in any way, especially the sick and heavy burdened, that they be comforted by the healing hand of Jesus himself and the compassion of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our police officers, firefighters, EMT personnel, and all the men and women in our armed services, that they will be kept safe as they offer their lives in service to others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who mourn their loss, that our deceased loved ones will come to the fullness of life in the kingdom of God, promised to all God's faithful ones. We remember Giuseppe Cavalleri, who was buried from our parish this past week. In a special way at this Mass, we pray for Eugenio Pensetta and James de la Quante. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way today for all of our dads, whether they are still with us on earth or whether they have passed. In gratitude, we thank God for the gift of their lives and for the ways in which they have in fact reflected the love of God our Father for us. For them we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And at this time, if you happen to be with uh, your father or your husband, I ask you to place your arms around them. If not, I ask you to raise your hands. If they're not here spatially on earth, uh, or maybe have passed, as we offer this blessing for all of our dads. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men who are our fathers, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers on earth and be rewarded for being so in heaven. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their daughters and sons, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect and prayerful memory. Grant this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful people by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith, and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the human heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, with me, your most unworthy servant, with my brothers, William, William, and Mark, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise 
for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those whom you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to you, O God, his heavenly Father, giving you thanks, he blessed the bread, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice 
a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever.